There is nothing for us. Pakistan's flood homeless start to despair. After several attempts, Zamir Ali, his son, and his brother were finally heaved on the deck of a wooden boat. Earlier that morning, the exhausted 48 years old had waded out of his home with his relative near the city of Kampur Nathan Shad in Pakistan's Sindh province to look for their livestock. As the water around them got deeper, they were forced to swim for six hours using a bamboo stick to support, and had tired quickly. We held onto the electricity tower and waited for someone to help. Ali said on onboard the boat, "We scream our hearts out for help when no one stopped to help. I felt we would die." This area of Sin Dadu district is distinguishable from a lake with water stretch as far as the eye can see. His house, like hundreds of thousands of houses in the area, had been submerged. Between five percent and ten percent of the city's population of three hundred and fifty thousands are still stuck in their flooded homes. Those who can travel around the boat; others swim in the flood water with a stick to get about. Seawage and flood water have mixed to a dirty green. Interview with local people painted a picture of disaster on scale that government and NGOs were unable to cope with. Torrential monsoon rain had begun in mid-June, have devastated much of the country, washing away bridges, roads, livestock, and people. One third of Pakistan is underwater. More than 1,250 people have been killed, and more than 33 million people are affected in some way. Dadu and neighboring Kamba Shadadkot are the worst affected districts in the Shind province, itself the worst hit province. Flood water inundates roads for miles, making many towns inaccessible, displace people's lives in tents, and makeshift homes on roadsides. There's a common latent in Dadu that the breaching of Lake Mancher, the country's largest freshwater lake, on Sunday to lower water level in the district. Should have happened days ago, and for water to be diverged from Dadu to the lake and from there to the sea. As the boat that rescue ally approached the main bazaar in Kapu Nathan Shah Khali Hushan, a young man with a bamboo stick in his hand, his belongings on his head, approached to start talking. He said there were no evacuation facility for poor people and no aids. Yesterday, along with my Elling's father, we stood in this corner of the city for three hours. But the rescue team did not help my father to provide him with anything. He said, "We had to rent a boat and send my father to nearby hospital for treatment. The entire city is drowned with people inside their houses. No one from the government has come to help us." Another local man, Kadim Hussan, said, "Authorities consider us as insects. We are stranded." We lost all of our belongings. We need food, medicines, and help," he said. Faisha Eldi, the head of the Hadi Foundation charity, said that despite a great deal of effort made by the foundation, the government, and other NGOs, they had collectively managed to reach just ten percent or less of affected people. People who survived the flood may die of starvation, he warned. Many towns have been inaccessible, and Indus Highway is flooded. Safula Chandio, a medical student, said she had tried to set up a first aid camp to help people suffering from waterborne diseases, but was unable to access financial support and medicines. We will see another crisis soon as people are falling sick, Chandio said. An hour from Kapu Nathan Shad. The boat came to Superior Embankment, where more than two thousand people from the flooded village of Nurang Chandio had taken refuge. Alabas Chandio, no relations of Santivo Chandio, said villagers had escaped in pitch darkness on the night of twenty-eight of August, carrying whatever few belongings they could manage on their shoulders. Some had food, but most did not. I felt like my heart was going to explode. Chandio said. All I could hear was people crying due to helplessness. The children had no idea what was happening and were crying too. Mazu Alai, also from Nurang Chandio, said villagers had built a tent and makeshift houses on their own. We are running out of food, he said. We eat once a day. My daughter, who's just two years old, 
has a recurrent high fever, and there are no medical facility here. When the boat's driver said it was time to leave, Ali Bashk, a farmer, came and pointed his finger toward the flood water where crops of rice and wheat have been cultivated, but been buried and washed away. That's it for today. Thank you and goodbye.